Hello, friends. So today I'll talk about uh, something that I'm asked um, about, and that's masculine perfumery. What are some of my favorite masculine fragrances? I uh, might have covered it in some other videos, and uh, uh, but I wanted to make a separate one since many of you are asking, and if you ask, you shall receive. And uh, today I will talk about some four uh, fragrances that are specifically masculine fragrances that I very much enjoy. As always, um, a preamble, and I don't follow the you know the gender guidelines all that strictly in perfumery. If something really pleases me, then I wear it. And um, but I know that um, it's not the same for other people, and uh, for men, it often can be trickier, especially some fragrances read to them as to. Um, as to feminine or they like them but they're a little bit afraid to wear them what might people think generally you know as I said before just wear whatever you like uh, it's so rare that people observe anything around them then uh, that I really don't think anyone will make um, a judgment about you uh, based on your fragrance and if they would that, well, that's their problem but uh, masculine fragrances Generally, it's known to uh, that masculine fragrances are more conservative, they're less um, innovative or they're less daring than feminine fragrances simply because, you know, the market is thought to be more conservative, men tend to reach for the same thing. And um, these days, of course, in niche perfumery, you have plenty of fragrances that are defined as unisex or basically if you like it, wear it and they don't have any particular gender code. But uh, four fragrances that I think are really nicely done uh, and uh, while retaining this kind of classical masculine perfumery, which is like woods and leather and uh, uh, focus on the drier notes, then these fragrances are definitely uh, the ones that I wanted to mention. And the first one is Chanel Egoist. Again, it's not the most, perhaps the, not the most classical choice because Egoist is also kind of a polarizing fragrance. It's a, it's a good seller in Europe. In the US last so, there is also Egoist Platinum, which uh, was developed later. And that one is more like uh, bright, fresh, um, has this kind of barbershop accord. And uh, that one, to my knowledge, sells better, at least in the US. And Egoist, the original, is a oriental fragrance. It has uh, this beautiful, dark, woody accord with a plummy note. It's imagine like cooked plums, uh, plum compote, and a little like, hint of violet darkness about it, and vanilla. So there is an element of sweetness, which some uh, men find off-putting, but others really enjoy. And this fragrance has been around for quite a while and it still has this following, uh, at least here in Europe, it's really quite one of the um, well-selling fragrances. If not as well-selling as perhaps Chanel, um, Chanel Bleu. Uh, but this fragrance to me is definitely a fragrance legend because of the way uh, how its accord is fused, how all the elements of the composition have uh, this uh, beautiful effect. It's not a heavy fragrance, so in fact uh, this bottle is a splash and it can be easily used as such. Uh, so there is this element of radiance and freshness that persists even when the fragrance enters it into its woody, the more mellow and enveloping part. So definitely worth uh, trying it. Another fragrance is newer, is uh, Terre d'Hermès. So this fragrance, um, and in fact, this one is uh, one of the newer interpretations of Terre d'Hermès because it's a lighter, um, or the toilette version, I think. Um, but uh, so it's a little bit more citrusy than the original. Either way, uh, it's still in the same kind of mineral, woody, um, uh, field and uh, it just has this brightness about it, crispness. It uh, it really evokes uh, to me the uh, smell of um, 
smell of rain or smell of the beach. This, there is this kind of freshness about it. Not quite marine, but more just fresh, just invigorating, fresh and bright, quite energizing. So I really like this fragrance and uh, I love to smell it around me. Uh, another fragrance that's uh, even newer than the others that I've described is uh, Ben Halligan's Halfetti Leather. And this is a dark, rich leather with a beautiful spice accord. And the combination of the notes, the, um, the leather, it's almost this bittersweetness, the suave uh, and uh, woody element that just beautifully, beautifully developed. Um, this fragrance, of course, can be worn by anybody, men or women. Uh, but to me, it smells a little bit more masculine if I were to uh, define it um, in such terms, mostly because uh, the way the leather is interpreted and how it's really accented with aromatic herbs and woods. But uh, it's really worth considering. And another fragrance that I very much like is Larique and Noir. And I find that fragrance just beautiful. It's a uh, vetiver, which is um, a, a roots of a type of grass and it smells green and like milky hazelnuts and grapefruit and licorice and woody. Really beautiful, um, lovely fragrance, just uh, elegant and polished, uh, very dry, so there's no sweetness about it, but just utter elegance really gorgeous i like it myself i love to smell it on people around me and i always recommend that fragrance whenever my uh, male friends are asking me for advice on what to try i think it's just so beautiful and vetiver is such a beautiful note so those are my choices for today and um, i always uh, welcome your comments and would love to hear what you like, uh, what fragrances you're wearing. So thank you for watching and have a great day.